Hello, welcome back to another Power Apps video. This time I want to talk about um, address validation and auto completion from within Power Apps. I was ordering a birthday present for my son online the other day, and they, the website I was using had one of those nice, you know, auto complete your address things. I thought that'd be quite cool to put into Power Apps. Let me just show it to you. Now, obviously, in a browser environment, you get access to JavaScript, which enables that sort of interactivity between the browser and whichever API it happens to be using. We don't have that, but you know, we can get pretty close. So this is my Power App, which I just generated from the SharePoint list. Let's just delete these. Just a simple list, a bunch of fields, which are basically address fields. So if we go to the Power App, click on search and then type in something like Microsoft London. This should give us a bunch of addresses from Microsoft London. This is the one that I'm after. Click on it, press submit, and it should come over to my SharePoint list. Easy. Now, there is a difference in the functionality between the United Kingdom and the United States. I didn't test the other countries, but if I put in Microsoft Redmond and search, that is in Microsoft Redmond, um, and it doesn't the search doesn't look up business names, it's just addresses. So if I put in one Microsoft way, for example, then it does complete the address. But it doesn't put in the company name. I don't know why it's different, but it is. Let's have a look. There we go. Now on the UK based version of it, which is the same API, you don't have to be specific at all. So if I type in Nando's, for example, get some chicken, it just finds all of the Nando's. Um, and if I want to be more specific, I can put in my local one. There we go. I click on it and away it goes, finds everything. So that's just something to be aware of. Now this just works off of, make sure that worked. Yeah, there's Nando's and Microsoft. So it's just two flows. One flow is when you click on this button, it returns a list of addresses, a list of possible matches. And then when you click here, that's what gives you your specific address. If you go back and look, this part here, which you wouldn't show in a production application, is the unique ID that Locate, which is the service that I'm using for the address validation, gives to that particular address. So let's go and have a look at the two flows. So we've got the two here, Locate, Interactive, Find, and Locate, Retrieve. Interactive, Find is this one, which brings back the possible addresses. And retrieve is this one. When we click here, it goes off and gets the address details and inserts them for us. So let's go and have a look. Interactive find. So it's triggered by Power Apps. It defines an empty array to hold the addresses. And it gets the address query the query string, which was this part here from Power Apps, sets the country from the drop down in Power Apps. And here I just set my locate API key and then build the query string. Um, so this is just setting a variable and building up the query string. Then we do a HTTP request to locate um, with the API key and the URI parameters. And that's it. Set a variable with the responses, um, the address items, and then use a HTTP response. Let's just have a quick look at the run history because it makes slightly more sense in there. So this should be the Nando's request, I oh know, the KFC request, um, where we've got 
two results. I put in Walton, and so there's Walton Liverpool and Walton on Thames in Surrey. Um, and then go back to the interactive find, no, the locate retrieve, sorry. Let's modify that. So again, triggered by Power Apps, um, defines an address array, which I don't think that's even used. Um, sets the address ID from Power Apps. Sets the API key, again, builds the query string, which is dead simple here, it's just the address ID. We could probably get rid of this step. Well, we definitely could. Sends the HTTP request off. Which I just show, yeah, nothing to see there. Passes the JSON just to get the items back that I'm interested in, the address bit, because they return some other information. And just doing a select query to just pare down the amount of data because they do return a lot of fields. And then it just responds with the output of the select query back to Power, Power Apps. So as you can see, it's dead simple. Um, they've got good documentation on their website. Um, as you can see, is the find and the retrieve. Um, so if we just look at uh, an example request for a JSON, and this is just like what we did in Power Apps. Sorry, Flow, Power Automate. Um, it's easy. If you get stuck, let me know. I'll see if I can help you out. If not, enjoy. Cheers. Bye-bye.